How is everyone doing? Welcome back. Hello, hello. Hey, Rasheen. Hi, IGOXD, Prism Blue. And let me always remember to check on uh, the Facebook. Hello from wherever you're watching, from wherever you're tuning in from. <clears throat> How's everyone doing? I hope you're having a good start to the week, everyone. Hey, Henry. Silent is the most common for me. Silent, by the way, is the one synth I've never owned never used um but yeah i've heard great things i think silent was has been around the longest to be honest um but yeah how's everyone doing let me know where you're tuning in from i'll run down today's schedule what we're looking at what we're going to explore um this is a big title i'm aware um but i think there's a good meaning behind it as per last week, which was very, very popular, we're going to have a lot of these um, presets, or, well, not a lot, all the presets that I cook up are going to be free for people to download. Oslo, Norway, wow, you probably live in one of the most beautiful parts of the entire world, Zibanez, that's amazing. Any tip, I'll master my first song tomorrow. <laughs> um, oof. Do you mean like mi master after mixing? That's a big topic. <laughs> <clears throat> Poland. Oh, wow. Yeah, you guys are tuning in from some beautiful Scandinavian, Nordic, European places. India. That's awesome. Deep space music. Oh, wow. I feel like your music might sound incredible based off the title. So, yeah, keep uh, let me know where you're tuning in from, what you already know, what you expect to get out of this. Basically, the idea behind... Um, the title today, How to Understand and Create Any Sound, is a bold statement, I'm fully aware. But I, I've realized that over the past, you know, however many months of doing these sound design sessions, if you're not familiar here, I'm definitely seeing some new names, so definitely subscribe, because these are a weekly thing. We have a full playlist of these, and we take uh, requests from you guys as well on the Discord, and you get free presets, so there's a lot of th reasons to subscribe. But over the past month or so, we've been going into lots of different sort of big topics and subtopics, and um, I think that a good way to sort of um, really feel like you know sound design is to learn with your ears almost the way that a musician learns to play music by ear so recognizing um pitches harmony intervals this is all stuff i did you know back with formal music training and learn guitar and piano etc and then the same practices can be applied for sound design so that you understand when you hear a sound what the actual elements of that sound are and that's a tricky thing to master but it's actually once you break down to the things that you need to understand, the rest of it can really be quite self-explanatory. So I'm going to play some examples today, try and keep them as short as possible for copyright reasons. Um, but we're going to look at Rushing Back from Flume, so sort of feature bass, Stay, Kid Leroy and Justin Bieber, because this is probably the biggest song on the planet for the past months, um, The Hills by The Weeknd, and uh, Love Tonight, which is sort of like a feature rave remix, actually by David Getter, I didn't even realise. So we've got sort of every... I'm trying to cover a lot of different bases here in terms of electronic music. Um, but if you have any requests of songs or sound design, sort of, you know, how is this sound made, You feel free to drop them in the comments. That would be something I'd love to delve into, especially maybe tracks that I've never heard of. Um, but in essence, everything is almost based upon a sine wave. Not that every song is a sine wave, but if we think about um, additive synthesis, that is the process of stacking sine waves to build more complex waveforms. And basically with... Um, with waveforms and oscillators, we have a selection of picking different waveforms, but these waveforms are basically more harmonically rich versions of sine waves. And the, the funny thing about all this is there is sounds in nature all around us, and I always find it funny to relate um, instruments or purely just sounds out, out and about in nature back to synth waveforms. For example, um, someone said to me recently, why does... Um, uh, you know, a trumpet, or sorry, it was a like a brass horn, like a tuba or, or a trombone. Why does it sound like a synthesizer? And uh, I realized what they were trying to say was, why does a trombone, you know, a horn, sound like a certain waveform, more than likely a sawtooth waveform? And it's funny how, obviously, these brass instruments and the synth, the synths are, they share, they share a lot of characteristics. So 
the basic process of today is to try and get your ears perked up and understand what exactly you're listening to is. I think it's good to be both a passive listener and an active listener. And basically what I mean by that is it's hard to enjoy music when you become so analytical with sound design, mixing, engineering, mastering. You you know, you're listening for stuff when really the purpose of music is for like pleasure and enjoyment. <laughs> so it's important to still try and hold on to that as best you can. That's why I think it's good to listen to new stuff, new genres and whatnot. But at the same time to be an active listener and listen really fine for the types of sounds and music. That's a skill that is worth having to be able to dissect My biggest frustration ever was not being able to understand how something was made when listening to it. And I remember it was a a really big issue for me at a certain writing session. It was actually for for the Eurovision Song Contest, fun fact. Um, And uh, I was trying to get, I had this sound in my head. Um, and obviously I was referencing something from other artists. And I just couldn't figure out how to get this sound out of my head at the time. Um, And anyway... You know, a year or two down the line, I realized I needed to explore and learn sound design in order to be able to do these things. So anyway, we'll be getting going in literally one minute's time. So uh, we've got some good people in the chat here. Hello, uh, Dolly, Jish, Alejandro, um, Michael. Uh, can you make ambience and tonal sounds? Yeah, we could certainly do something on that in the future for sure. Uh, Ronak, um, we're always taking requests. So that's, yeah, absolutely. Please you know, make suggestions. Um, So, without further ado, if everyone is ready, for those of you who don't know, this is our weekly, because I'm aware there's some new names here, this is our weekly sound design sessions, and on ADSR we have live streams all throughout the week with different brilliant hosts. My name is Brent March, and I am the sound design host for this awesome uh, channel, and yeah, we have loads of fun. So, if you have any suggestions, please let us know. And we can do something. Give give me the beat. <laughs> hey, William, William Williams. Wow, what an awesome double name. If I hope that's real. So, um, I'm going to play a couple of examples, a couple of different songs. And if people can try and interact in the in the chat, that would be awesome. You know, try your best to. It's it's as interactive, but uh, basically. Um, I would like to know how Travis Scott Heist and the room was made. That's awesome. Keep those coming in. I can totally try and fit this in, um, maybe even in the stream. So what I want you to think of is focus in on the synth sounds from the songs that I'm about to play you. We're not focusing on anything other than the actual um, keys sounds. So it could be keys, basses, synths, but I'll, I'll specify which sound. And you want to think of it like this. Um, think of it like hearing different pianos. So you would recognize that a piano, a Rhodes, a clavinet, and a Hammond are totally different, isn't it? If you heard a Hammond, you would know it's a Hammond organ. You would know it's not a piano. And if you heard a piano, you would know it's a piano. So with that in mind, we want to get it to the point where when you're listening to a, a piece of music, you can go, oh, it's a sine wave, or it's, oh, it's a sawtooth. Or we can get further down the road with that, like, oh, it's using um, a certain type of filter or a certain modulation or a certain um, envelope shape, etc. There's essential envelopes, essential filters and stuff like that. And I've got a cool little graph as well around oscillators. We did do a stream on oscillators a while back, which is a good starting block here. If you're a complete newbie and you don't know any of this, don't worry. We have one on oscillators, which is worth checking out. So, um, Okay, so we're going to start with... Um, ba, 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 ba. I'm going to start with, um, let's start with this patch here. Can I just check that people can definitely hear uh, this? I always let the day. Hopefully everyone can hear this. Like I did say, disclaimer at the start, I'm not going to be able to play these for too long, just, you know, I was trying to think of ways we could really work around this by maybe pitching <laughs> pitching them up or down, changing the actual uh, the playback. People can hear it. Awesome. Okay, so first song here. I'm only going to play this for like 15 seconds or something, okay? Really try best, guys, to pay attention to and listen to this key sound in the background. I'm aware that some people might not have any idea what it is I'm trying to talk about here, but if you can try and let me know what combination of oscillators but more specifically, what waveform do you think is being used for this patch here? And feel free to listen to it yourself. This is Rushing Back, Flume, and Vera Blue. So listen to the key sound. I always let the day slip away. I should have been making up my mind. I never opened up, took it all in, and now I'm running out of time. Some 
Sometimes I. Okay, that's cool. There we go. That was our four bar loop. So have a think as to maybe what sounds you come to mind in terms of maybe the type of waveform that said synth is using. And we're going to design this patch. And you, by the way, guys, you'll be able to download all these free on the Discord, just like last week we did bass. But be very interested to see what you think. Um, so deep space music, sign and pulse width stuff going on. Some awesome... Um, so yeah, yeah, you've got some really, really good pointers there already. That's really good to see. Yeah, Mark Spooner, sign wave, sign... Yeah, I think everyone is clued up here, which is good. Hey, Hydrotech. Awesome. Signs. Yep, yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Yep. Okay, perfect. And obviously, the main thing I'm listening for here is purely just the waveforms for the oscillators. You know, we could totally go into more stuff like, um, if we have time, I've got a thing where we can um, take it a step further and look at um, noise oscillators, envelopes, modulation, voices, effects. But for now, that's good. That's great, guys. So let's go on to the next one. I think this one is probably the trickiest, honestly. Um, it might help if people have seen Charlie Puth on TikTok show you how he played this and what synth he played on. But who knows what synth... Uh, waveform, what waveform we're talking about here for this song. So this is Stay. I think everyone probably knows this. I do the same thing I told you that I never would. I told you I change. Okay, that's enough of that. Treading on fine water here. Anyone, any ideas for this one? It's quite tricky to be honest. Yeah, some good suggestions. This is really fun. <laughs> saw, Juno saw. Saw, saw. Interesting. Square. Yeah, interesting. Very, very interesting. Cool. 10, 15 more seconds, and we'll move on to uh, song number four, and then we'll have one more song. And my ambitious self thinks that I'll be able to get through recreating all these. I'm pretty sure I will be able to. Yeah, it's um I think it's it's it sounds exactly like an arpeggio, but I think it is actually played. But yeah, I totally get what you mean about a plucky arpeggio. And and good thing there is you've picked out plucky, which we're talking about envelopes now. Saw and pulse, interesting. Pulse with square. Mm. Michael G. Michael G's got good ears, I think. You know, more or less there. Cool. Okay, guys, let's go on to um, see Michael. We're basically looking at songs and trying to explore, can our ears tell us the um, waveform that the oscillators are using? And then that is literally half the battle in terms of um, getting better oral skills for understanding sound design. Um, okay, third one, guys. This is an older tune, but what do people think? What do people think this one is? Okay, ready? Again, only be able to play 10-15 seconds. If you want the names of these songs and you don't know them, I can uh, I can let you know and you can listen to them, but I think most people don't know these. Your man on the road, he doing promo. Okay, that's enough of that. Oh, that's great here. Yeah, that's exactly what you're looking to learn. Awesome. Wow, people are quick on the... Quick on the bandwagon with this. So, 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 so. That's a so. Super so. <laughs> awesome. I think people are quite clued up on that one. For anyone who missed it last week, we basically did essential bass sounds. And there was free presets for that. There'll be free presets for this. But last week was sort of like the building blocks for what I wanted to look at this week. Because we looked at three different genres. And then it made me think, well... We can totally just learn how to make any sound. It doesn't matter if it's a part, a plug, a synth, so... Um, cool. Okay. I think people have got their uh, their answers in here. And, okay, let's do a last one. So, by the way, you can feel free to contribute more if you want. Someone before was t saying a plucky sound. The main thing here is that we just um, really focus on the the waveforms at use here. But if you can pick around, if your ears can pick out the envelope and the type, maybe a filter or even effects, that is awesome. Um, okay, 
this one here. Okay. Just skip forward a little bit for this one. Okay, here we go. Ready? So this is our last one. And again, what waveform do people think for this one? These are all, by the way, I'll be completely honest, these are all really quite simple patches. There's nothing too crazy here. I should have disclaimed at the start that we're not going to be looking at anything like FM additive, you know. But honestly, those sounds still use traditional waveforms in order to achieve the sound design. So there's nothing to worry about in terms of, oh God, I've got to learn something completely new. There's still the same building blocks that we're looking at. So here we go. That's enough of that. <laughs> um, so, um, what people's thoughts on the waveform at hand there? Um, there's some interesting modulation happening as well, isn't there? Plucky saw, saw, sine, square. Okay, this one's probably got the most um, variable answers. We've got a triangle. First, first uh, person to say triangle for any of these, which is interesting. Probably one of the more underused waveforms. Sign saw triangle saws with cutoff plucky saw, yeah, it's a, it's an awesome patch. Square pulse saws with noise. Mm. I like the fact that you mentioned noise. Um, soft saturated sign, awesome. Some cool. I think you could. The funny thing is, there is sadly a right and wrong with a lot of these. It's not one of those, but you could probably get to this with different roots almost. But I think in the simplest form. You can do all of these with one definitive waveform. Uh, that song is called Love Tonight. It's a remix by David Guetta Dolly. Okay, so looks like everyone's got their suggestions in on what is using what, which is awesome. So here we go. Here is the presets that I've got for today. These will be up available tomorrow, guys. And to start out with the flume one, I'll show you how to design these all from scratch. But basically... All of these sounds are using something from basic shapes within Serum. Vital, uh, we looked at initial audio sector, uh, pigments, massive, silent, all of these will have all of these basic shapes. So this is not Serum exclusive whatsoever. I'm just aware that this is the most used wavetable synth by the community. Let's check out this first one. Um, I'm also going to not really play them note for note because A, I haven't learned them perfectly and B, again, just really treading on fine water with trying to avoid copyright on these things. Uh, so, so this one was like a... Those of you who said sine wave are pretty much on the money, to be honest. We've got a sine wave here, and we also have a slightly more harmonically rich triangle. For people who have no idea what it is I'm talking about, this is a really uh, useful graph. Let me get it. Okay, here we go. So, inside of Serum, you have a thing called basic shapes, and it basically shows you all of the different uh, waveforms in the 3D vector scope or in 2D. We're viewing them here in 2D. This is just a little sort of illustration, but we've got sine, square, triangle, and sawtooth. All of these use different um, odd and even harmonics, okay? We can probably get into the technicalities on a, a different stream, but basically these are the four most used waveforms. And the funny thing is a lot of the waveforms that you come across, you know, when uh, someone releases a new synth and they've got new custom wavetables, that's awesome. Someone's gone a great length set and makes some really cool wavetables, but they're all just basically some variation of these waveforms or a combination of them, even real world sounds. I remember I did a stream on organic sound design and we used a um, sawtooth layered with a brass stab from a literal, like a, an actual brass instrument. And it's almost like a real world ver ver variable of a sawtooth. So, uh, if that's handy, guys, someone said screenshot, yeah, feel free to do that. So, basically, we are using a combination of these different waveforms. Um, I'll just come off this. 
So for this first patch here, we have a sine wave, we have a triangle wave, and a little known fact that people you know, should probably get um, more aware of is, um, is the fact that you can actually go in here in the table and you can use, well, you can do additive synthesis, but you can also design your own waveforms. The grid here, a long time ago, we looked at the grid. Um, and basically, this is imagine like a resolution of a photo. If you up the grid, it means that you're going to get um, a higher fidelity waveform. This is only really useful for boosting if you've got a waveform that has a lot of harmonically rich content going on. So, for example, we looked at some, like I said, an organic thing a while ago, and it was a real um, piece of audio. And in order to scan the waveform, it had to be a high um, grid count to sort of collect all the information. For stuff like these, you'll find that we don't really need anything too advanced. But what you can do is you can draw in your custom uh, custom waves with these shapes here. And we'll end up doing that for um, probably for the the David Getter remix. Um, to, to get on this, guys, use just a little pencil tool here. Someone asking how I did that. And then you can go in here and you can draw in um, additive engines. And there's loads of things you can do here as well as crossfade and edges when you go in between uh, the grids for a more pure sound. This the serum is an old guy on the block, but still incredibly powerful and unbelievably ahead of its time. So here's the first one. We're going to come back and recreate these, by the way. Let's load up the next one. <laughs> People are saying they never knew. <laughs> well, now you do. That's great. Okay, desktop. Uh, here's that get a lead. So this was the one that I think people were probably the most like, um, maybe the most unaware of. So this is basically, uh, let me go back through the comments. People are saying, um, so for the last one, people were saying sign, saw, square, sign, saw, 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 try, saw. Uh, basically this sound is a, so, a tiny bit more harmon harmonically rich sine wave layered with a noise oscillator so but forget about the noise oscillator it's this is an unbelievably simple plucky lead sort of patch um basically what i just showed you before you can go in and slightly modify these waveforms but this is a sine wave but with almost like characters of a triangle wave so um someone had said this a little what was it someone's response um let me have a look someone had said sine Saw, sign, saw, plucky saw, saw, try. Deep Space Music Official was probably the closest with the triangle because it's kind of like a triangle in a way, I'd say. So this one is like... Um <laughs> and the noise oscillator is doing quite a bit there. Um... But yeah, this is an unbelievably simple patch. Um, this is literally just one oscillator. Um, we got a, a filter and a type block. It's so simple. But sometimes you re it's funny how some, sometimes the most simple sounds can be the most um, difficult to sort of depict, like what is going on there. Like, is this crazy waveform? Is it? No, it's just like one waveform, got no unison, nothing fancy, but. <laughs> It's a great sounding patch. So don't ever think that you have to have complicated sounds to sound cool. Um, let me have a look on... I keep going back to desktop. I need to change that. Uh, stay. I think there was, again, a mixed variation for this one. Let's have a look. Uh, so I've got a, a bit of a variable here. You can change this oscillator A or B out for whatever you like taste-wise, but this was created with a Juno. Um... <laughs> I know that's not the correct uh, chords, harmony, melody, you know. Uh, this one's probably got maybe the most going on. But basically, this is like a, it's sort of, again, it's still on the basic shapes, by the way. Literally, all of these are. This is um, basically like a pulse width sort of square rectangle. It's a weird shape. And you have to change the, um, to really get close to this, you've got to change the wavetable position. Um, sorry, the start position. As you can see, this one and this one are actually different, ever so slightly. Um, and then this Juno one as well is just adding a little bit 
a little bit of thickening up. Um, but again, I think quite a few people are close to that. Yes, I will upload these, uh, Rev and Mustafa. These will be uploaded to our Discord server tomorrow, all of them. So yeah, uh, that one, I think, what was people's responses on this one? I'm so surprised, though, you guys, by how good you already all are at um, picking out the correct sound. Like, I think majority of you were uh, either on the money or close in terms of what you had said. Uh, so the first sound people had said signs, which was basically right. And then people had said for this saws, saws and pulses. So this one is the trickiest one I'd say, but yeah, it's basically like pulse width. Um, uh, I wonder how Black Coast made that warm warping synth. Again, I'll listen to this for sure. Um, okay, cool. And then the last one, even I can't remember what it was. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's uh, This one is the hardest one to get right, but basically a little bit like last week when we looked at Respace. Um, this, th the thing I struggled with with this is I think there's a... Um, if I open it up. So this is the... Um, da -da -da. So this is the the weekend one so it's basically a sawtooth almost like a respace but it's got this like metallic sound that um has some sort of um pitch modulation to going on um at the end you have to listen with good cans but there's something going on and basically there's definitely a custom wavetable sound source for somewhere it could be from a sample market it could be a found sound from a field recorder who knows but um i couldn't find anything that came close to it apart from the electric guitar but it sadly didn't come close to it but this basically has a lot of underpower in the sub from the sub generator and then i would say just mess with the filter And it's got a bit more saturation and distortion going on for sure. So try different variations of these. Need a little bit more resonance. So, um... Two waves cancel each other. Why two waves cancel each other? Interesting. Uh, I'll pick the comments up at the end from uh, from people, just in case you're wondering. So uh, let's get started then with uh, making these guys from scratch. So, but anyway, to to summarise, basically, just learn to uh, try and hear sine waves, saw waves, uh, rectangles, and you know. Um, the basic shapes in Serum are a really good starting point for. If you can identify those by ear, try and do blind tests and be like, right, what's this one? Get someone to work with you if you like. There's actually some tools out there that help train musicians actually in terms of like mixing and stuff. So this could be a cool thing to uh, sort of like within sound design. But if you can try and pick out those basic waveforms, you've got half the battle done, honestly. So uh, let me just grab this. I'm aware that I'm over at the minute. So to go back to the first patch, which was this one, the flume one. Uh, the funny thing about a lot of the feature-based stuff is it's really just quite basic um, waveforms, quite basic shapes and everything. There's nothing too crazy going on with a lot of it. Um, a lot of it is unison. Um, a lot of it. So we got a sine wave and we got a triangle and um, let's have a look at recreating it over here. You could always add to it as well later on, I'll show you what I mean, but head into your analog basic shapes, waveform, wavetables. Here you can see them through different actual shapes and then you can go through them here. And uh, basically it has a basic shape like this and another, probably something more along the lines of the triangle wave, roughly speaking. Um, there is some specific stuff like we need to change uh, the actual starting point if we can for the randomization function so it starts from the same point. There's also some modulation going on with this patch in terms of the, um, the tuning. So 
once people, a lot of the people in the comments here when I was doing that test seem to be really confident already with picking out the right uh, waveforms and whatnot. So then you should try asking yourself, what kind of envelope is this? You know, so someone had said plucky, someone said something like, oh, this is um, a really uh, like a drone. So get used to, is it, a, you know, if it's a lead sound, if it's a pluck sound, it's if it's a pad sound, try and understand what a good starting point is for your envelope. You're not going to get it the first time, but if you get yourself sort of to the right place, then you can shape it and tweak it further. Um, another good thing is try and learn, you know, can you hear what the filter is doing? Um, I think a good example of this is actually that, again, that lead on Love Tonight, where it's going bubble, bubble, bubble. It's a bit like a filter opening and closing, isn't it? It's going bubble, 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 bubble. So being able to pick out stuff like that with your ear, like you can quickly craft these um, presets really, really quickly and just by using your ears. So um, you've got one pure sine wave that is down the center, and then you have um, a triangle wave, which is basically like a sine wave, but slightly more harmonically rich, um, and it uses a different combination of odd and even harmonics. And uh, I'm giving it some unison, you know, seven, five, odd numbers is probably best for this. And let's keep the center oscillator down the middle, focused down the middle for the spread. And then the other thing as well with this one is it has a, an, a low pass filter, but when you think about it, sine waves aren't super harmonically rich, so we don't really need to take off much of the top end whatsoever. So what I've done is I've applied a 12 dB. You could probably have done a six to be honest and left the mix where it was, but I had adjusted the mix. Um, so both of these go into a filter and um, I was also just bringing the cut off right up to about uh, 8K. I'm down an octave here. Okay, awesome. So if you get your right sound source, now what you need to look at is basically the shape of this sound over time. So we're talking about how is the main VCA working. So in terms of hierarchy, I would always start with um, get your oscillators correct, then figure out maybe do you need um, either to the VCA, is it vital first or is it the filter? So in this case, I've start with a filter. And then as we see here, we have um, our main ADSR here is shaped sort of like a, it's got a fairly moderate release on it. So let's just recreate something like this. It's sort of best to start off by hand. It's hard to recreate them, by the way, when you're not listening to them again. <laughs> um, we can't play them too many times for copyright reasons, but if you're listening to these, just like honestly, a really good practice is play it back and then try your synth or play along with it. That's awesome. You know, if you can play along with it, it's a really good way to learn. Cool. It needs a little bit more sustain and length and a slightly slower attack. there already with this okay and um, the other thing as well if your ears are good enough is to start to be able to try and pick out what effects are maybe going on so with this one you can tell if you listen to it it's so wide that this clearly is some sort of harsh effect going on and the best way you can get to that is with a hyper dimension inside of serum but also the chorus is a really nice stereo width tool other than that there's nothing else going on here you could maybe have done a little bit of eq to filter out the lows um i turned off the actual hyper engine and just used um a little bit of the dimension <laughs> And then I also had the chorus and I would just definitely slow the rate down here um, and then all of the mix down as well for sure to about maybe somewhere between 10 and 15. Okay, this one's nearly there. So the main thing that we got to do here is we need to uh, get that pitch modulation happening with the fine tune. So again, I'm not going to play this again, but if you want to listen to Russian Back by Flume and Vera Blue, there's the like slight modulation 
of the um, fine, I believe. And again, I don't know if this was... I actually think that this is some sort of like... It might be a bookler, actually, but um, I think there is, um, whether it's been recreated using a VST or a real synth, there's clearly some slight modulation going on and it really gives it a lot of analog character. Best way to do that is using LFO and I would use this probably most likely on the um, the fine, on the fine tune of the triangle wave because the triangle wave has got more harmonics in the upper mids, whereas you won't really hear it that noticeably and it'll clot up the muddle. It'll make this quite muddy. So let's apply an LFO to the fine, and this will sound horrific. So let's pull back the course tune. And let's keep it like this at about quarter rate. So let's have a listen to this. going to filter out a tiny bit of that more top end bring the mix down definitely getting there um, let's change the position of the sine wave that way it's more predictable and lastly I think it would be cool if we just add some effects to this again it doesn't have to be exactly the same maybe you could be trying to recreate a sound so then you can create your own composition with this sound that you love so, for example, you could maybe recreate this sound and then go, cool, really happy with this sound now. I want to make it ever so slightly more, you know, more me and then use it in your own stuff. It doesn't have to be just recreating sounds for the sake of it. I always find it's good to have a sound design session, literally the name of this playlist. I do these, by the way, um, all the time is that I'll have a sort of a writing and a mixing session. And then I might have these days dedicated purely to creating patches and stuff so that when I'm um, writing music, I'm not in a, it's, it's, I find it bad to kind of, be you know writing or mixing and then doing sound design stuff i think it should be separate um uh, because really these would have been separate roles by separate people so a day dedicated to this stuff here and there is really useful let's get rid of all the lows here it's a shame it doesn't give us a frequency amount but it's close enough and i'm just going to eq Bring that Q value down. Okay, let's hear this one then. That was a slightly slower attack, I think. Longer release, maybe. And bring the sustain down just a little bit. So I keep tweaking these as a gun. It's almost got like the quality of a Rhodes because a Rhodes is basically sine waves, isn't it? But there we go. That one's quite cool. It's quite straightforward. So don't worry, I'm not getting rid of this preset. It's already saved. It's in a bank. It's yours. It's free. Don't want anything for it. Go on the Discord tomorrow and it should be there. Let's go back to initial preset. So um, hats off to everyone who's basically had a great set of ears and already done their training with you uh, with their ears. Okay, presets. The next one that we're going to look at is um, the stay preset. So, like I said, this one is basically like using pulse width modulation. Um, if you watch, there's a video floating around of Charlie Puth showing basically he was the sort of ghostwriter of this entire track. Um, and. Um <laughs> Deliberately trying to play that terrible, kind of. Um, so, this one is basic shapes again. Um, I've got this Juno waveform, but to be honest, I'll just turn it off for now. It's more for you guys when you're downloading these to have a bit of optionality. Um, and basically, this is in basic shapes, and we can see in the 3D graph here, it's the second last position, like a pulse width rectangle, sort of square-esque. Um, and this one is basically, again, like a pluck. If you look at the envelope here, 
it's uh, quite straightforward. And then we also have a long envelope here, which is um, on the filter cutoff. So this one is mainly about the, the waveform is important for the oscillator, but without the filter opening and closing the modulation, like this is what this would sound like. Like it's just nowhere near it at all. So as equally important is, is if you try and do things in stages, if you felt like when I was doing this sort of quiz, or can you guess the um, the waveform? It's like our musical geek version of Sudoku or Bingo. Um, can you try and figure out the filter by ear is an awesome thing. So basically, try and train your ears and get your oral sound design uh, ear perception as good as possible with as many different elements of synths. Um, you can t take it really, really advanced though as well. You can go into different processes and different forms of synthesis. So this is a basic form, but honestly, most patches will be created around this concept. So without that filter, this patch is nothing. But also, without the correct modulator for the filler, that this is also nothing because of the way that the envelope is shaped to basically open the filter. That's what gives it that sort of quacky sound. So let's recreate this one. If we go back into the old analog and we go into basic shapes, this one is this one here. So this is, again, sort of like a pulse width waveform. And again, this one is uh, using five voices of unison because you can hear it's quite spread out in the old cans. This is just random, by the way. I'm just picking five, but you could totally change it. And again, it's important that you have it change the blend to keep one of the voices focused right down the center for things like mono compatibility. Um, this is using a, I think it's just an MG Low 12, backed off down here. So now what we've got to do is we've got to shape the envelope. So let's change our main VCA, which is here. And this is basically in the shape of a pluck. Um, also, this is zoomed in, as you can see. So its finishing point is at 500 milliseconds. Let's zoom right in. Okay. And we've got to basically a curve from the decay to the sustain. So this is the main, the way the sound is shaped over time. It is kind of plucky, so it has a quick attack point. Cool. I'm going to back off on the detune here of the voices. And let's turn the oscillator back on. And now what we want is a envelope 2 is going to modulate the cutoff here. Let's do the same thing and zoom back out. And basically this is like a gradual fade over time, right down to the release point. And we don't want it to open the whole way because it'll let two. This is a really, really harmonically rich waveform. And if you listen to the sound, it's constantly got that top end filtered, even with the um, cutoff opening. So we don't want to let it go too far. Okay, cool. Um, again, if we look at envelope two, what I have going on here. It's just one, it fades out about 500. Um, so let's just tailor this. And then you could probably drive the fat control a little bit to give it that analog vibe. Um, then the other thing in the effects with this one is sort of similar. We've got some EQ and stuff to give it some stereo width. But what is the most important thing with this preset is actually the eighth note ping pong delays. So let's explore that. So first of all, we've got a little bit of filtering on the top. And it does have a bit of a increased Q on this one. These are things that can be harder to figure out. Let's really back that Q off though. Let's go to about 100. The thing that's not very great about this is the way you can't shape the slope. But never mind. Okay, uh, then some chorus. And that should probably go after this, to be honest. Okay, and then, uh, let's change the rate and the mix. 
the delay is where it's at with this. So it's a big part of the sound changing in the stereo field. Let's go to eighths in the left and the right ping pong. And really cool effect so your delays and reverbs don't ruin um, the mix in context is filter out your lows and your highs and keep it sort of mid focused for the majority of stuff this is not one of those golden rules or anything but um it's worth noting i'm going to pull the feedback slightly back up the mix and probably pull down a little bit more on this and then you could put it into a space sort of smaller space it's mainly this layer that's giving it the effect keep on a, a hole with a small size and you don't need to cut out too many lows definitely have a bit of high cut try that one That's more or less there. There's a lot of stuff you could do with this one, I find, to really tweak it and get it close, but I'd have to be listening to the original again. Okay, and then the other one is the getter one, which is a uh, initialized preset. This one is uh, probably the one where you can have the most fun. I would say with this one, you can do it in a couple of different ways. I was showing you how basically you can go into the grid view here and make your own oscillator waveforms. For those of you who didn't know, by the way, if you go into here, okay, this is our horrible starting point that makes you want to cry. Um, if you are in the view here where it says bin, you can actually shape your own waveforms. This is basically additive synthesis. Okay. And ta-da, there's my waveform. Very, very terrible sounding. But just for those of you who haven't explored it, so what I'm doing here is if I boost the frequencies at a certain point within the bin, you get a more harmonically rich oscillator within either the low end, the mid, the high, you name it. Okay, so let's go back and um, initialize this preset. What you want to do, um, I think the best way to approach this, right, is this oscillator is too rich for the um, Love Tonight remix. The sine wave is not got enough content and what I ended up doing when I was trying to create these today was I ended up driving the sine wave with some saturation to the point where it was overly saturated but I had got the sound I wanted but then it was just too com it's got too much compression going on from the basically like the distortion is applying um saturation to the with the waveform so I was losing um quite a bit of the body in a way so what I realized was I can use a combination. So you could basically use a sine wave and you could blend in another waveform like a triangle. But what you could do is you could just reshape a sine wave to make it almost a triangle wave, but not quite. This is probably easier if I just show it. So in the basic shapes, what you need to do is you need to head into the wave view here. And you've got to change the grid size here. The reason is I want to use one of these sort of pre-made shapes to um, change the shape of this over time. Um, but if I try and do that, I will more or less um, get the weirdest shape ever. You know, as you can see. So let's go back to um, a more simplified uh, resolution of two by two. And the reason for that will become apparent because basically these shapes is one for each side. So as you can see, now this shape occupies just literally the left and right side of the scope. Okay, cool. So um, I just load this preset up to remind myself. If you haven't heard this song, the one that we're recreating is uh, the remix, which is Love Tonight. Here it is. So there we go, there's the waveform that I've already created. Um, I have pitched this down an octave, that's one very important thing. I mean, you could play it lower on the keyboard, but this is the most important part, is the um, modulation of the envelope. This is actually the most simple sound, but it's the tightest pluck. So it's a 149, roughly 150 on the decay. Um, if we go back to this, we'll apply the filter, and with our main envelope, um, we are just going to create a super, super tight um, 
point here. The slightest shot. Okay. And then our second envelope here. I should probably zoom in on these. This is used to open the cut off all the way. So before when I was talking about um, you don't want to let through too much harmonics for a certain song, this is the opposite. So you are basically teasing the cut off the whole way from null right to its max value. So you let the it's that's what gives it that squelchy sort of value. Um, that's what gives it that sound. So, finishing off here at around 370. Um, so, I always find that it's useful to zoom in on these waveforms. And... Um, let's have a look at my waveform here. So, it's... Uh, a really really low decay and sustain point but with a longish release let's increase this this will be roughly there enough so let's pull our cut off all the way down apply this and let go all the way there there we go, we can hear that it's almost there. The rest of this sound is genuinely effects and the noise oscillator. So when I was talking about if you can try to pick out other things, really great if you can start to use your ears to pick out filter or essential filter movements and modulations, the main envelope shapes for maybe the uh, sound over time with your VCA, and also effects like I always think of the noise oscillator as more of an effect because you are adding a sound to an existing oscillator. So in here, um, go into the analog folders and use one of these will do um, something like uh, Juno Chorus um, and what you want to do is you want to apply this envelope to um, this as well and let it open up and let's hear without it so it gives it um, an elongated tail and bite and this is where the fun bit comes in so I can hear from this sound it's got crazy multiband compression going on I'm pleased that I was right there because I couldn't completely remember. So it's EQ'd, it's compressed, it's got eighth note delays again and reverb. Pretty cool. So it's got a lot of the low end filtered out. Straightforward preset. Back off the cue like this. Then we've got some compression going on multiband. Um, I prefer this to go afterwards. And that is really going to bring out the top end. So just tame the highs a little bit. And let's stick a delay in. Eighth notes. Reduce the feedback. Filter it. Ping pong mode. It's what gives the pocket, you know, the feel to the sound. And lastly, a little bit of reverb. Um, it's sort of like a big size with this one, so the opposite of usual. Low cut out anything that the compression has bought, brought up at the low end. And bring back the mix. Keep it in a fairly big space. Sort of. Okay. Okay, great. So now we've got a good patch going on. I feel like we go back and make some tweaks. I don't want, don't want the level of the chorus to be too hot. Sorry, the noise. So that one definitely is my favourite one. Okay, great. I'm just shaping this. I think I 
timed this phenomenally well. Look at that, five minutes left and managed to get every single one done. Oh no, everything but the, the weekend one. The weekend one I'm not going to recreate purely because I've got an absolute behemoth of uh, questions, but the weekend one is just almost like a respace with a second oscillator, which I couldn't quite find, but it's some sort of metallic sound. Um, you could probably custom sound design it yourself and create a waveform and export it and put it into Serum. But it's basically like a respace sound um, with a slight opening on the filter and the cutoff. So, guys, if you have any suggestions or anything, people, uh, if there's sound, maybe there's a song or something and you want to understand the sound design of it better, I will try my best to maybe look at it for a future episode. Next week, we've got a Halloween one coming up, a Halloween dedicated stream, um, which should be so much fun. And then after that, I believe we'll be running our sort of, we do one each month where it's like recreating the sounds of, we did Synthwave and Cyberpunk, and then I believe we did The weekend. so it's either an artist or a genre. Um, so that will be coming up. So um, I hope that everyone enjoyed this. All of these presets will be absolutely free for you guys to download. Um, and they'll be available on the Discord by either tomorrow or Wednesday, I believe. There's already a lot of freebies on there in the freebies channel, by the way. Um, this one's from last week. If you check out last week's um, live stream, there was a house hip-hop and a ambient bass patch, which again we made in Serum. Okay. I'm going to go backwards with the question, which is the opposite of what I do. So, um, any thoughts on chill retro synthwave sounds? Um, I love them. Yeah. Uh, we did have a synthwave dedicated stream, uh, Skate Alex 2. Uh, we haven't done a huge amount of retro um, stuff. Um, it's a really cool topic, so yeah, we'll definitely think about it. It could be something we might look at in the, a fortnight's time, like I said. Um, but we're always open to maybe artists or specific genres for that stream. Um, yes, Warm Warping Synth from Black Coast. Okay, I'll make sure I check that out for sure. Is the name of the song Black Coast by Trendset? Like, is that Trendsetter? Is that right? C. Michael? Um, okay. Thank you, Quinton. Yes, I think I'm the only ADSR guy using Serum. Uh, my goodness. The only Serum. The only ADSR guy using Studio One. Um, some of that's in Russian. So, no, I can't understand that. I think it's Russian. <laughs> Hello, Vlad Tattoo. What? Um, let's have a look. Will you upload this after? Revend, I think I did answer this actually along the way, but yeah, this will be, you can watch the stream back on the Sound Design Sessions playlist or just search ADSR on YouTube, or you can watch it on Facebook, or you can watch it on Twitch, or you can grab the presets on Discord. There's a lot of options, but there'll be everything that you've seen. If you've missed it, you can catch up on it for sure. Um, yeah, that feature in this uh, edit the oscillators is really, really great. Wait, what did you click on? Open? Yes, sorry, I think C. Michael, that was the same question, wasn't it? There's a fly in my room. Um, um, I think the song that you were asking was maybe the one what, which we've just done here. That was um, Love Tonight Remix. And then the rest of it was just people answering with your correct, mostly correct sound wave source, which is awesome. The song is trend, T-R-N-D-S-T. Okay, I'll check that out for sure. I found the track. Awesome. I will absolutely check that out. So, guys, it's been a pleasure as always. My name's been Brent March. You can follow me on the usual socials, although I'm pretty terrible at posting on them. Um, but, yes, here every week, if you have suggestions, please feel free to get them in. We've had a good audience again this week. Definitely seen some more popularity around this sort of uh, recreation series where you can either pick them up yourself or do it and follow along, which is awesome. So, great to see a lot of you here. Hope you have a great week coming up. Please let us know if you have any suggestions. Like I said, next week is going to be some sort of spooky sound design. Um, I'll be doing all sorts from uh, using Foley to create sound, sort of science fiction-y um, horror sounds. Uh, binaural 360 will be coming in where to maybe make our own wavetables. And as usual, there'll be lots of freebies. I realize that's just like a cool thing to do, I think, with you guys is give you free stuff that I make on the stream, which was awesome. Uh, thanks, Dolly. Lucian Remix. I'll be sure to check that out for sure. Thanks, Gordon. As always, the streams are all throughout the week, so if you enjoyed this and you want to maybe get better at your mixing, someone was talking about mastering before, um, songwriting, we've got like an awesome K-pop uh, producer here, and let's face it, K-pop can be so many different genres almost. Um, there's all of that happening throughout the week, um, well, the week's coming, and I shall see you guys next week. Presets will be up within the next couple of days on the Discord, by the way, if uh, you want to grab them. All right, guys, I shall see you uh, next week. 
Oh, and in case you don't have serum, yeah, link is below. Um, we do use other synths, by the way. It just seems to be two weeks of serum. All right, guys, have a great week. I'll see you next week. Catch you later. Bye.